And welcome back to Kidman Talk. What a crazy season of life and ministry we are in. You are listening to Kidman Talk number 134. And the last one's been crazy. Before this even blew up, I just had done one on relational ministry in a digital age. Then I explained what our church is doing. Last week's blew up all about how to do Zoom. Today, I'm on Zoom with the awesome Jeff McCola, and we are going to be talking about how to help our families be connected. But I invited Jeff on because he is launching something that is amazing that I want to make sure you know about. So um, wherever you're doing, hit pause, take a break, grab your favorite Coke, Choco, Cock, Chocolaca, I don't speak coffee, your favorite drink, glass of water, wash your hands, spray something, some cleaner, and let's talk Kidman. All right, so Jeff, boy, how has life changed for you in the last, what, three weeks of life? Man, it's really simple. Um, this room that I'm sitting in is not the room that I'd be sitting in. Um, <laughs> my job as a global musicianary is to travel. Um, I always joke around and I tell people, look, everyone at my house knows Jesus, so I need to find other people who don't know Jesus. Amen. And, um, yeah, it's that simple. So uh, I spent already uh, this year one month in Asia, uh, which was incredible. And I love watching your pictures and videos. Uh, I'll tell you um, – I think the Lord really prepared me for this moment, to be honest, and and I'll explain. To answer your question, I should be, if I were on Earth 1.0, I should be traveling right now. Um, I was in Texas uh, when everything started to shut down at a a, a giant uh, Kidman meeting for the Assemblies of God, and uh, literally as we were finishing our last general session, uh, they announced in the county that no one in a group of more than 250 could meet, and that meant we were done. So it was literally just God allowed us to finish that. Wow. And I was supposed to get on an airplane and fly to Seattle. Um, that yeah, is, I was supposed to be there with you. Yeah, that man. So, um, yeah, that's kind of like our annual let's go to Seattle thing, and uh, that didn't happen. Um, and I'm, I'm glad I, I drove home and was able to get here and be here with my kids. And uh, Yeah. Considering I've literally been in seven countries this year, um, one of which I touched down in Taiwan. I was I was less than 300 miles from where the big outbreak happened in China. Uh, I was supposed to be filming a music video on the Great Wall of China um, during all this time, but the Holy Spirit told me to cancel that uh, in December, and um, I understand why now. So you know, it's amazing how God prepares us and we don't know. I I went to Sacramento three weeks ago to speak at a conference there. There were just early hints. That was when I did my funny Facebook video of going into Chick-fil-A with my hazmat suit. It was funny then. I wouldn't do that now. Um, And then it was Thursday night, about three weeks ago. I'm at my desk, and God, you know, it wasn't like a voice. It was a crazy idea. But if it's a crazy idea, you know it's God. Yeah. That take your family to the mountains. You know, we have a little getaway place up there. It's a timeshare, but if we go there for just the day, it's free, right? It says, take the family up there. They ended up having a, a room cheap, and we went up there. We just swam. We had fun, and I'm literally driving home from the mountains when my boss texts, emergency Zoom call, whole staff get on the phone. I'm like itchy internet, and he's basically saying, there's no church on Sunday. What are we going to do? Yeah. And- so I, that's when I launched the Kids Church Online, which I'm sure most of you have seen. If not, just go to kidology.org forward slash KCO or spell out Kids Church, Line, Kids Church Online. Either one works. And uh, boy, life just got changed. I'm in one of our preschool rooms. This is my magic backdrop for the Zoom magic shows I'm doing. There's a green screen over there. There's a purple wall over there. There's a black screen over there and um, cameras. And it's a mess. Puppets, magic tricks. Because this is, I don't even go to my office anymore, and I'm one of the few that comes into the church, although we are doing some outreach to the community and filling boxes of hope, and so we're doing some cool things there. But life is totally um, different now. But what I'm enjoying, and I'm sure you are too, um, seeing the creativity that is coming out of the kids' ministry community, and it's been encouraging. I mean, I'm learning I'm trying to share what I'm learning. I did a webinar on how to do Zoom. That was the last podcast. I did one on taking your Kidman digital and showed how to do green screen. In fact, 
uh, Monday night, I'm going to do an iMovie webinar. I'm basically going to edit my kit, my kit shirts online live. I'm just going to edit it, sharing my screen yeah. and let people just watch me do it. And I'm going to talk through how I do it. And my favorite notes have been from people who said, I never thought I could do this. Um, but I'm doing it and they are, what are some of the cool things that you've seen before we get into what I want to talk about what you're doing? Yeah, man. I mean, I think that's the, the big thing is this. Um, every time we have adversity, we grow. Like, Amen. let's just, I, I've taught my kids when, when we run into what we would normally consider a problem we, in our family, we're only allowed to call it an opportunity. And, um, I like and that. I'll, I'll say, and it's, I was, I was sitting in this room, uh, last October with my friend Kidman Charlie and my friend Andy, uh, who's a, in the underground church in China. And we were having this conversation and literally it was, man, um, we need some persecution for the church to grow in America. It was literally we, in this room, we sat and had that conversation. Wow. And, and I will say um, that was prophetic that we, we, that, Everything that I've been seeing is people's response. Now, some people's uh, response, I look at it and I go, oh, man, they're complaining. They're like, what do I do with my kids? You know, I can't wait for this to be over, blah, blah, blah. And it's just sharing their heart. Um, I saw a statistic that said only 20% of Americans are even concerned with their kids' academic achievement or spiritual uh, achievement. And uh, it, those numbers horrify me and, and surprise me. And But at the same time, the reality is this, um, there's such a, a establishment of this is the silo the parents go in, this is the silo the kids go in, this is, you know, these are the, the places where people go. And uh, I really have been working for about seven years on trying to create unity within the home and create products and resources that help parents to disciple their kids. And the big challenge has been really simple. Parents haven't engaged with those tools. And I don't know the single publisher that's really winning at creating things for at home because there's just, it's just been really convenient to say we're busy. Yeah, you can create the most amazing things, but if parents don't use it, um, that one, then it doesn't matter. So and, now uh, we've tried everything with take home papers, videos, YouTube channels and stuff. Now we're in this great opportunity where the parents are home, have more time. And, you know, whenever well, I do a wedding and I don't do many, I always pray for the couple that God would give them enough success to know he loves them, but enough trials that they never stop depending on him. And I think that's true for the church as well. We, we always tell the kids the church is not the building, the church is the people, but we're saying that in the building. And I think it's really cool that this has forced the church yes. to get outside the walls. You know, the church that I'm at, the building I'm in, our church grew the greatest when the financial crisis hit back in 2008. I wasn't I on remember. staff, but our, our church building was half built and they had to wall it up and move into a school. And the church grew the most when it was in that it was basically became a mobile church mm. for several years. The economy recovered, the church grew, and now, now we're in this building. And, um, and so now we have another opportunity. So uh, I talked in a different podcast about the things our church is doing. We're taking boxes of hope all over the city. We're being featured on Fox and Friends on Monday, not us, the, the, the nationwide boxes of, of hope um, effort. Uh, that's getboxesofhope.com for those that are going to ask later. But here's my prayer, Jeff. We are learning so many neat ways to minister without a building. People yeah. are learning how to edit. They're learning how to make movies. They're learning how to go live. They're learning the importance of mail and sending packets to kids. And my prayer is that when this is over, and this will pass, this too shall pass, um, that we don't just forget all this and go right back into the way we used to do it. I'm That's hoping happened. some of this stuff sticks and that and and I don't know what that'll look like yet but I hope whether it's still using zoom or still producing video or maybe our kids churches get even better or we start continuing to put things out there to reach people who don't go to church I can't wait to talk in six months about how this COVID-19 era has transformed the church its way of reaching the world and yes buildings have their their advantages, but what are we going to do that we learn during this stage? And that's why I wanted to have you on because one of the things I'm hoping comes out of this 
is parents taking ownership of their kids' spiritual development. I've written children's discipleship materials. You know, I've, I have next steps for kids class. I have all this stuff. But like we said, it, it doesn't mean anything if they don't use it. And, you know, so the, when we ask the question, what's going to stick? Well, you're a guy whose whole life and heart and passion is making scripture stick. Yeah. So I love that you have just come up with a way to hopefully capitalize on this season and get families learning scripture together. So share a little bit of what God's doing in your heart, why you're doing this. And then, of course, share your screen and let us get a glimpse of it because I'm going to be doing this with my families. I'm launching it right after Easter because right now there's a lot of build up for Easter. And then and then what? Tread water until we get our building back? No, nope. no, nope. we're on a mission. So uh, I'll tell you a, a big element of what God put on my heart this year is to help homeschool families. Uh, now, the crazy thing is homeschool was like a, a small niche. Um, and I had planned to be, so one of the things I'm not doing right now is going to seven homeschool conferences and meeting <laughs> with, with homeschoolers. But um, it was cool. Last night, I had my first virtual Teach Them Diligently conference meeting. And I went into a, a room like this and there's a virtual table and a bunch of people came and sat at the table and I did what I'm about to do with you. And I explained to them the simple thing. Um, and what, what I just got to say this, Carl, God knew that this was coming and everything God prepared me for in this season is actually, I didn't have to retool or even pivot. All I had to do was just present it slightly differently. Yeah. So, um, so my passion is really simple. I want, I want people now, people, they could be tiny people. They could be, you know, you and me people. Any people. People, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So my mission is to set the word of God to music so people can hear it. Um, what I was doing earlier in the year in Asia, I went over and built my first recording studio in uh, Philippines, about eight miles from the volcano that exploded. And uh, so now I have an office in the Philippines where we're recording songs in Mandarin. So are you, are you saying that disaster follows Jeff McCullough? Um, so we need to just I watch my YouTube disaster. The, the volcano blew up. Then I went, a lot of people were like, dude, why are you going in the volcano? They were still at like stage three, stage four warning. It didn't matter. I trusted God. I went right where the volcano was. There was ash all over the buildings. Um, and after That's establishing the recording studio there and training up my producers and my talent there, so they're starting to produce songs in their languages. I went to uh, Jakarta, Indonesia, and then I, I island hop around to three different islands in Indonesia, in Sumatra, in Nias Island. And uh, we recorded songs in the Nias language and in uh, the Indonesian language. I have over 500 college students in Indonesia right now that have dedicated their lives to sing scripture. And I'll tell you, here's the crazy thing. In Indonesia, right before this happened, you could go to a public school that's run by a Muslim government, and you could teach English. They'll stop the school and give you an hour-long assembly, and you could teach English using scripture songs. That's Thousands amazing. Of, that is absolutely incredible. And that's it, God, man. It is God. And so I, I went over there not to teach them anything or tell them something. These people got independently got a hold of my songs because I went to a homeschool conference and met another ministry who sent it over there. And all of a sudden, I just hear about this great movement that God's doing with my songs. I went and um, I took uh, my friend Dave Davidson from scripturesong.com and he went over there and we made a documentary and I can't wait to start sharing that footage because man, it, it'll blow your mind um, what God's doing. But um, that was just, I wanted to learn what was happening and what God told me to do next is actually build recording studios around the globe. And, um, and uh, so, so people can have the word of God in their own language. And, um, and that's, that's the next thing for me. But in the meantime, uh, it's to reach families in America. So I came home to reach families and now I'm going to do it on a much bigger level than I ever thought I would. Um, so God gave me the vision for a program called mission of hope. Okay. What I've done is I've taken my already catchy word for word scripture songs. All right. My lyric videos and, um, and my hand motions that are all American sign language. And we've put them together in a way that families can experience them and go beyond. So the last year I took a blank piece of paper. That's one of the scariest things that people can do is take a blank piece of paper and set it down and say, God, what do I put on this? Amen. And, and by and, the way, you're probably going to say this, but I love, you've been on all these mission trips around the world, but you're calling this a what? 
<laughs> trip. We're going on a mission, a mission to our house. I love that. that this is this. I'll, I'll, I'll show you that twist. So what? What God? The word God told me to write on my paper was discipleship training, and I wasn't discipled. I was raised by heathens. Okay, let's just call it what it is. My wife was raised by heathens, and. We didn't know how to disciple our kids. We started this whole ministry called Jumpstart 3 simply as a response to needing to disciple our kids and to create tools that actually work to make scripture stick. So once we started memorizing, then we was like, okay, now what do we do with it? Are we evangelizing? Are we tearing it apart? Are we learning how to study scripture? So um, a good friend of yours and mine, his name is Stanley Mears. Um, I called Stanley, which he's one of my closest friends and mentors. and. Uh, uh, I call him a friend tour, just like I call you that. Um, <laughs> he, he is so creative and very humble. Uh, a lot of people don't know he helped me create the resurrection clue hunt. Uh, I brainstormed with him. We redid the salvation cards, and it's now the U-turn cards. Kind of a he guy doesn't want his name on stuff. He, he, you know, I had to argue to just put it in there in the in the on the front page. Yeah. Uh, but he is so creative, and I love. I'm hoping you're using his W tool guess for, what the, the turn, turn I, over, I'll, i'm going to show you how it's implemented um and uh and this is the idea and he's like well you know you could just give him a devotion but why not teach him to study the bible jeff i'm like well that's the idea he's like i've got this tool and i want to show it to you and and what we did we just kind of branded it jumpstart three style as you'll see but um what i want to do is real quick i want to show you like a 60 second teaser that explains this and gives you the DNA of it. And then I'm going to dive into the website and show you how it works. Okay? All right. Awesome. I can't wait to see it. I'm going on a mission. A mission to my house. I'm dancing, singing, shut up, love, now listen to me shout. Are you stuck inside? Does your family look like this? Join Jumpstart 3 on a mission of hope, a mission to your house. Use music, motions, and family devotions, and your family could look like this. Yeah, see, that's what happens when you use music and word-for-word -word scripture combined with American Sign Language to worship God. Each week, go to jumpstart3.com slash mission of hope to find a new song, coloring page, devotion, everything you need to do to memorize God's word and put it into practice. I'm going on a mission, a mission to my house. I'm dancing, singing, shout out, love, now listen to me shout. Mission of hope. So right there, you can see um, it's a little bit different. It's it, the, the theme song says, I'm going on a mission, a mission to my house. I love and, it. And you so know, uh, said we're to go into all the world, right? But people forget. And he said, you starts in Jerusalem, which is where you are. Yes. Then Judea, you know, the suburbs, then Samaria, cross-cultural, and then the world. Right. And we forget that because the world is sometimes glamorous to get to go on a mission trip and go to some exotic place. And of course you get there, it may not be as exotic as your fantasy was. It, it can be tough. But the point was you start where you're at before you, you go far. People say, well, I can't go to Sri Lanka or the Philippines. They can go to their home. They can't. Well, I'll, you know, I'll flip that around. Um, I was talking to uh, my friend Clint, um, and, uh, he does a lot of discipleship, uh, training with kids. And I'll tell you something that really, we, we both agreed. He said, if you went to your average high school freshman and you said, would you like to go to Africa and build a mud hut, but you might be eaten by a lion, or would you like to walk into the lunchroom at your school and tell the captain of the football team that he might go to hell if he doesn't know Jesus, <laughs> mom, I'm going to Africa. You know, <laughs> there, there's something about that, the, if you go somewhere else, now you're doing this great thing and it's easy to understand that's missions work and what have you. But, um, you know, I, I've, I've been saying for a long time that I want to do what no one's doing so I can reach the people no one's reaching. And often it's those people that are directly around us. Um, so, so check this out. We, what we did is we, we created a, a new section on our website. It's jumpstart3.com slash mission of hope. So as I go down the website, you know, it explains that I want you to be a musicianary, a musician is someone who spreads hope through music. Um, 
Now, here's the best part. Right here, this is week one. I give you so many tools for free. So there's a, there's a coloring page. Boom. There's a devotional. Now, you'll notice this has got the W, M, E, and 3 that we talked about. When I click on the devotion guide, dude, here's that turn your world around. So with this devotion guide, this allows parents to do inductive Bible study with their kids. And then each week, they've got a blank page that they can fill out. What does the word mean? So you memorize the scripture using our music and our motions. Then you can write out the, wor the words of the scripture. Then you can start figuring out what does it mean? Let's look at the Bible and study it in this. context. And then you flip that letter over to an E. Now it's everyday life. How do we apply scripture to our everyday life? And then what are three ways we can put it into practice? And my big challenge on this mission is who are three people that we can reach out to and share the gospel with? So That's incredible. I it, love it. It's simple. Now, here's the, here's the cool thing. Dude, in this country, we've got people that are, um, they're, they're not going to have money right now. They, they're down on, on jobs and all sorts of other things, Carl. Um, so we've made it available for no cost for people to stream. So you can stream right here. If I click here, boom, it's taking me right to Apple Music. I can play the song, right? Boom, now I'm listening. It didn't cost anything. Now, here's the cool thing. For Jumpstart 3, um, when you actually go and stream our music from our official channels, and this is important for people to understand, um, it generates a small bit of revenue for us. So when you stream it from Apple Music or Spotify, which I have links to right here, we get 0. 0.00008 cents, which is awesome, and it adds up. If you go here, you can stream our lyric video right from YouTube. And uh, so now I'm playing my song right here on YouTube. Now. Here I go back here. Now, right here, I want you guys to see this. See where it says buy the video? Why would you buy it if you could stream it for free? Let me break it down. You need those hand motions. We've put together a special collection of songs that are perfect for this moment. This collection of songs is all digital downloads. It includes an audio file, a hand motion tutorial to teach you the hand motions. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and then there's a demonstration video where one of our worship leaders will lead your family in worship. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice. You get all 10 songs with an audio file, a tutorial to teach you American Sign Language, and a demonstration to lead your family in worship, all for just $25. That's 50% off. When you're done learning your scripture for the week, I want you to ask mom and dad to help get your cell phones out and make a video. That video is gonna be you singing, screaming, shouting, dancing, whatever you wanna to do to say your Bible verse into the camera in a fun way. Now, they're gonna upload it to our site and we're gonna pick the best five videos. They could look like this. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. Or this. Or even something like this. The beauty of this program is really simple. It's interactive. It, it causes kids to hear the word of God over and over. In fact, it hopefully it'll cause parents to do it too. Now, let me just give you my, my little quick rundown as a homeschooler, all right? If you're new to homeschooling and you've got your kids there and you're trying to figure out, man, how do I get through this? Well, I'll tell you what I tell every other homeschooler. Every program I've ever bought for my kids requires them to sit down and be quiet and focus. Now, one of the things that I've never seen kids do effectively is get up in the morning and sit down and be quiet and focus. You got to get your wiggles out. You got to run around. We have recess at school for a reason. Now, a lot of schools have gotten rid of recess, and that's a problem, especially for kids like me. I was that kid. I needed to get my energy out. Me too. Oh, yeah, who knew? So check this out. At church, we always start church with worship time, with motions, and those kids are getting their wiggles out. You know, therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine, and they're jumping up and down. So how about this? If you open up your day by worshiping with one of our songs with our motions, that's homeschool PE. It is. And you sit down. And you write out the Bible verse 
in your W part of your turn this world around in your devotion guide, guess what? That's English. Then you're studying scripture. That's Bible. That's three subjects already. You've just learned American Sign Language doing our hand motions because we use actual ASL in our language, in our motions. Guess what? That's four. Now you're doing a scripture. You're doing uh, writing. You're doing PE. You've got a foreign language, ASL. And Man. there's a little spelling in there as well when they're writing. It's true. you got spelling. Oh, great. You're doing music. We're up to six right now. I could, I could probably get you up to nine or ten, depending they on how They learn the reference. That, does that count as math? Mm, no. But, but what, it, what does happen is this. Um, Hebrews 4.12 says that the word of God is alive and active. And uh, what I have seen over and over and over is when kids bring the word of God into the home, when the family is listening to it together. Um, my friend called it the black Toyota truck effect. Like he'd never seen any black Toyota trucks around town until he bought one. And then all of a sudden he sees a black Toyota truck everywhere. It's like you and your Jeep. Yes, I know that Carl Bastion Jeep. And now when we drive past the house, kids are like, dude, it's Carl Bastion's car. Yeah, when you have an orange Jeep, you know, it's true. Whatever car you drive, even my wife's boring gray Sienna minivan, we see them everywhere. Yeah. And, and so this is the thing. What you focus on, it starts to fill your mind. When you focus on the word of God, you'll start to see that scripture appearing everywhere. And what's amazing is you, your kids will start to recognize this amazing prophetic movement of God. And, and all of a sudden that scripture that should be encouraging us is because it's in there and it's coming out. And I'll, I'll tell you one last thing. Um, my pastor years ago, he got a job at a bank and uh, at the bank, he said, I want to see counterfeit money. And so uh, they say, there's no way you're going to see counterfeit money. We're only going to show you the real thing every day. You get to feel it. You get to smell it. You get to see it. You get to know what it really looks like. Now, here's the, the reason why they did that. They said that way, when something different comes through, you'll be able to spot it a mile away because this is what you're intimate with. The word of God needs to be the same for our children. It needs to be the same for mom and dad, for, for you and me, Carl. And so I remember that we had a we had a forger guy come to our school in high school, and I remember him saying, "Well, you can never study all the counterfeits, so we we become experts on the main twenty dollar bill." But hey, he showed me something really cool. Look at your twenty there, Jeff. Okay. Look on the back. There's a secret. The artist wanted to leave his trademark, so he left. He put a drawing of a little uh, hobo hitchhiking he's got a little stick over his shoulder and a little bag where is it you, you just got to look carefully it's a little hobo and he's got a if you have a 20 dollar bill get it out really quick look on the back outside that the memorial yeah if you look carefully there's a little hobo he's got he's got he's a hitchhiker he's got his thumb out he's got a little bag over his shoulder if you don't see it i'll, I'll tell you where it is and and uh, then you'll be able to show it to other people i don't see it where is it hold, hold it up to the screen and I'll, I'll show you right where it is all right it's right um, oh, what do you know? He's been picked up. <laughs> <laughs> so right. You're going to use that. You're going to use that. And, uh, I've had people insist for an hour. They're going to find it and they won't let me help them. And finally, right. when they give up, you say, oh, he's been picked up. So, Hey, right. good, good joke to end on. But Jeff, right. I am so excited about what you're doing. I pray that God is going to use this to impact tons of families I hope that our listeners are going to go to jumpstartfree.com slash mission, mission of hope mission of hope and support you by getting those motion videos, making sure their families are doing it because um, I think it's going to make a real impact. And thank you for taking the time to do that. Thank you, Carl.